Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of Tutorialoso. So today we're going to revive an old laptop with Linux Mint. Now if you don't really know what Linux is, I will soon upload a video on my channel where I explain all the key points that you need to know about Linux. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Now this procedure will delete everything from your hard drive. There is a way of keeping your old operating system and installing Linux Mint with it, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. So it's gonna erase everything from your computer, so copy any files that you want to keep on another hard drive or a USB stick. So let's not waste any more time, let's go on our Windows machine and see what we need to do. All you need is a USB drive of at least two gigabytes. So there's two files that we need to download. Uh, the first one is Universal USB Installer, which will allow us to install Linux Mint on a USB drive. And then we'll need to download the ISO for Linux Mint. I'll leave the links in the description. So on the Linux Mint page, you'll have several different options to choose from. Of course, we have the 32 and 64 bit versions of Linux Mint, but then we have several different editions which have uh, different graphical engines for their desktop environments. Now, there are slight differences in looks between these desktop environments and slight differences in uh, performance, as some of them are more lightweight and some of them being nicer are a bit more heavy on the graphics card. So here you need to do your own research to find out which one is best for you, but personally I'd recommend uh, Mate if you're unsure or if you have a really slow computer. So I'm going for Mate 64-bit version. Now you'll get to a page where you need to choose a mirror from which to download uh, the file. I'll, I'll just recommend uh, picking the closest one to you, so I'm going for the Europe United Kingdom one. Alright, so now everything is downloaded, we're ready to start. So insert your USB drive in your computer and then we need to launch a universal USB installer. After having agreed to the license agreement, we'll get to the setup page. So on here we need to select uh, Linux Mint, which is the distribution that we're going to install. Then we need to browse for the ISO file uh, that we downloaded and select it so that the program uses that one for the installation media. And now we just need to select the USB drive on which we want to uh, perform the installation. You'll need to tick the format box, which means that it will delete everything from the USB drive. So if you have any important data, copy it to your computer and after the installation you can reformat the media, reformat format the USB stick and put all the files back in it, but for the moment we need to delete everything from it to create a bootable Linux USB device. After you click create, you will get a summary of what the program is going to do. And if you click yes, the procedure will start. Whatever program you have for managing your compressed folders, whether it's 7-zip or RAW, that will open up and start unpacking something. That is absolutely normal, so don't worry. Alright, so the installation has finished, our USB drive is finally ready, we can, we can click close on Universal USB Installer and if we go to our file explorer you will find the uh, USB drive called UUI, which stands for Universal USB Installer. So now we need to boot into our USB drive from the computer on which we want to install Linux Mint. So insert the USB drive in that computer and turn it on. Now there are two ways to enter the USB drive. The first and simplest method is by selecting your boot selection menu when the computer turns on. In my case I need to press F8 in order to do so. And if you don't have the option to select the boot device, don't worry, I'll soon show you another way of doing so. After I press F8, I get this little menu where I can choose uh, the device from which I want to boot with my arrows and press enter to confirm. So I'm going to select the USB, devi USB device. Now if you don't have the uh, boot device selection option, you, you can go into your BIOS or your setup. In my case, I need to press the delete key. As you can see now, I'm inside my BIOS, so I need to go to the boot section and choose as my first boot device the removable device or USB device. 
After you've done so, go to exit and save your changes. Now, I don't save them because I'm going to use the boot selection menu. Uh, and if you use the BIOS to boot into your USB, after the installation, you will need to change these settings back to how they were. If you've done everything correctly, you should be in Linux Mint now. But that's not it, we've just booted into the USB. We need to install it on our computer's hard drive or solid state drive. So for now, you haven't installed Linux Mint on your computer yet. You still have your old operating system. You are just using Linux Mint from the USB drive. So you can try it, so you can try it and play around with it a little bit. But it's going to be slow because you're using it from a USB drive, which is using, I assume, USB 2.0, which is actually quite slow. So really, the only reason for which you should try Linux Mint without installing it first is just to get an idea of how the operating system works and not how it performs. So you'll find an icon that says install Linux Mint. Double click on that one and a setup screen will appear. So you choose your language. So now you have two options. Your first option is erase, which will delete all of your files on your hard drive and install Linux Mint. And the second option called something else is for pro users who want to either dual boot or even triple boot uh, and want to keep their old operating system or where you have several different hard drives or where you have an SSD and a hard drive and you want to install Linux on the, on the SSD. So something else is for pro users. Now I'm not gonna do a tutorial on how to use the something else part because you need to format your hard drive in several different partitions and do everything exactly how Linux Mint requires it and you need to do some tricks in your bootloader to let you choose between your other operating system and Linux Mint. So this is complex stuff that I'm not going to do in this video. If you want me to do a tutorial on how to dual boot Linux Mint with any other operating system that you have on your computer, let me know in the comments below. So now we select the erase and press continue. We need to choose our keyboard layout and after that we need to create an account for our computer. And after we've done all of that, the installation will finally start. This will take quite a while. And after it's done, you can either continue testing Linux Mint through your USB drive or you can restart your computer to finally boot into Linux Mint from your computer. And now we've finally booted up into Linux Mint. Now you'll get this startup screen. To disable it, you can just untick the box at the bottom of the screen and then close it. So this is it. Linux Mint has been fully installed. You can now enjoy your operating system. It does improve quite a lot uh, in uh, general tasks such as web browsing uh, and document creating. It comes with um, Liber Office, which is a f open source version of Microsoft Office. It's almost the exact same and the files are intercompatible. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like the video and subscribe for more. Wagwan!